everyone welcome to another bonus episode of bookish babbles uh to hope everyone's doing well uh today we are doing the mid-year book freak out tag uh for me at the time i'm recording is currently the last day of may and when this episode comes out it'll be the first full week in june so that's about halfway through the year so i figured now's the perfect time to do it um you know, look back everything I've read so far this year and, you know, look ahead to any reading goals I may have for the second half because it's June already. Crap. I'm not like in my mind, it's still like February. <laughs> I'm excited that the weather is getting warmer and it's summer and it's le and it's sunny out for longer. But at the same time, I am not ready for this year to be half over. Like I feel like it'll it barely started, but then again, I kind of feel like that every year. In my mind, sometimes I'm like, oh yeah, last year was only 2019, but nope. Nope, very wrong. This freaking pandemic screwed me up. Anyway, um, so this is one of the episodes I pre-recorded because I will be in Ireland throughout the first full week of June, so I'm not going to be making any new episodes. So, so I'm so at the time you're listening to this, I'm currently on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, and I hope you're all having a good week. Anyway, um, so before we dive into the tag, we got really exciting news today, guys! Uh, like, I'm still freaking out over it. Um, Rachel Zegler has officially been cast as Lucy Gray in the Ballad of Songbirds and Snake movie, like... For like the past week, um, rumors have been flying like crazy and I didn't really believe them because I thought, oh, maybe it's like a publicity stunt. Oh, they're just rumors because I know Ballad's supposed to start filming this summer and she's currently like filming the Snow White movie. So I thought, oh, may maybe it is just a rumor. But then, nope, the news dropped today, guys. We, we Rachel Zegler is our Lucy Gray. I am so excited because... I know I said I wanted someone unknown to play Lucy Gray, and part of me, like, still wants that, but I'm still, I'm so, but still, Rachel's a phenomenal actress. I loved her in West Side Story. She has a gorgeous uh, singing voice, so I have no doubt she'll do something great with the part, and I just want to, and I can't wait for the rest of the cast to be announced, so we have our Sejanus, our Dr. Gall, our Tigress, and, and, um, got over a year till we actually see the movie but gosh dang it's gonna be great we've got like a little over a year of hype to build for it so because i'm right now like all over my tiktok for you page uh like marvel and star wars things pop up everywhere and percy jackson which i'm glad because i'm in all those fandoms but i just want there to be a little more hype for this movie because i freaking love the hunger games obviously because i dedicated multiple podcast episodes to this but Anyway, so yeah, I'm freaking out still. <laughs> I'm so excited. But anyway, so we're here to, here to do the mid-year book freakout tag. So it was um, originally created by two YouTubers, um, Earl Grey Books and Chemi. I will link them in the show notes, though I didn't use their videos when I was writing down the questions. I or When I was preparing for this episode, I watched uh, Murphy's video and A Clockwork Reader's video, so I'll link those down below too so you guys are getting a glimpse of what i watch on youtube all the time so mm, without further ado let's dive into the questions so the first question is what is the best book you've read so far this year and it's a little hard because you know i've read quite a few good books this year so i'm gonna say three um one that i my most recent read, um, These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong, that it's pretty popular. I see it, you know, everywhere on Book Talk. Hey. Alright, my dog is rolling around the floor being crazy. So, um, it's basically a like kind of fan I isn't fantasy, I mean there are monsters involved, but it's not like a fantasy fantasy. Either way, it's a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in the nineteen twenties in Shanghai. And it's so good, like like, I, well, I think the last time the ending of, like, a YA fantasy type series, like, got, the ending of, like, that book, first book in a series got me so excited was, like, the ending of Six of Crows, and thankfully I have a sequel on hand and can immediately start reading it because, yeah, these Violent Delights, it was so fr phenomenal, and, and I really love, and depending on how the last book ends, this could be a new favorite series for me. 
And another one is um, I Must Betray You by Ruta Sepetys. She Again, she's a pretty popular historical fiction author. She wrote Between Shades of Grey, Salt of the Sea. Um, and in this one, it takes place in the 1980s in in like in communist romania where you know can't really tr- trust anyone revolutions on the on the rise and because it's a part of his history that i never really studied in school and i don't remember hearing much about even though like the 80s wasn't that long ago so it's crazy to think about that you know because when we think of the 80s we think of you know just the fashion and and kind of like these, like the 80s aesthetic that we always see. And then, you know, a lot of TV shows like Stranger Things and movies like it, um, like focuses on the nostalgia of the 80s. But there's still like, you know, crazy things ha- still happening in the world. So it's just really interesting because Ruta if, like always focuses on an aspect of history that isn't covered much and like brings it to light. And she always does in such a wonderful way. And I love every book she- I've read by her. And then uh, the third one is just the classic, um, Beauty and the Beast. Um, Beauty and the Beast is, of course, one of my favorite stories. I watched the movie so so many times. I love the musical. Belle's a dream role. But I, and like when I was a kid, I read like an adapted version of, of the original text, you know, like the junior adaptation of a, of a classic. But I had never like read the text, the full text until this year, and and it like obviously it's something that it would never like reading it now it's not something that would ever be written today but like it's something about but it's still like a story but it's just it was really cool to just read the um book that in that inspired what's now a beloved beloved movie and i what can i say i really i still really love the story and it's all that matters <laughs> And plus, I have a really pretty edition, so it looks great on my shelf. So anyway, on to the next question. And the next is, what's the best sequel you've read so far this year? So I went through my Goodreads, and I really haven't read any sequels, which is crazy. I used to be a big series person, but so far it's been just a lot of standalones for me. So the only sequel that I've read, I'm not even done reading yet. It's just the sequel to These Violent Delights with Our Violent Ends by... Chloe Gong about halfway through the book really like it and like I said when I answered the last question depending on how this book ends this could be like a new favorite series because it's a duology so there's only two books in the series but yeah I'm a sucker for a good Romeo and Juliet retelling and this whole series is just done so freaking well and I want everyone to read it so yeah our violent ends that's my answer to the question on to the next one so the next question is, uh, what's a new release you haven't read yet but really want to? Um, all of them, but <laughs> I'm I'm saying two for this one. Uh, one that I want to read very, very soon and probably will be one of my next reads. I say that now, but watch, I won't read it for like another three months because that's what always happens. But um, Electra by uh, Jennifer Saint, I probably mispronounced the title, but uh, Jennifer Saint wrote uh, Ariadne, which came out last year and was one of my favorite books that I read last year and that was like you know a retelling of Ariadne who we know from the story of Theseus and this is a similar type of story so I'm excited to read that and then um another one I want to read I haven't heard anyone talk about but I saw it at the bookstore one day it's a pretty cover and sounded good so I just picked it up um Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Su Lin Tan um main character is the Daughter of the Moon Goddess I can't remember what the synopsis is but it sounds like a good fantasy novel and I want to read it. That's all I need. Okay, next question is uh what's um most anticipated release for the second half of the year? Hands down, Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare. Third book in the Last Hours trilogy. I need it now. I I needed it like last year right after Chain of Iron came out cuz Yeah. For those who don't know, I love the Shadowhunters series all those books and been reading it for how long like 10 years now oh yeah yeah about 10 years now I've been reading those books it was around the time that Clockwork Princess first 
came out. Thank goodness I didn't have to wait between Clockwork Prince and Clockwork Princess. So I'm probably feeling the pain everyone who had to wait between those books is feeling right now. Because, oh my god, The Last Hours is so good. And I love all the characters in that one. I love seeing, like, you know, all the characters we loved in the Infernal Devices as parents. And, uh... I'm eventually going to cover that series on this podcast and those will be a lot of episodes because there are a lot of books in that series. Oh my god. And and who knows, maybe by the time I get to that series, not all the books in the, in the Shadow Hunter Chronicles will even be out. That'd be funny. All right, so yeah, Chain of Thorns. Ne- need it now. Okay, next one is, uh, what's your biggest disappointment? So... I haven't been like true I haven't like strongly disliked any book that I've read this year so far which is really nice no one likes a bad reading experience but one book I read that I didn't hate but it just like didn't quite reach my expectations like I think it's still a good book for its audience um the next great Polly Fink by Ali Benjamin um it's a it's like a middle grade contemporary book about this um this girl who goes to a new middle school and it's like a very small class i think there it's like there's 20 kids in the class or something and and when she shows up um the student um just suddenly moved to another school who used to be there whose name was Polly think and i guess he was like you know the class clown the kid that everyone loved he was like a legend or whatnot and then the kids kind of create their own reality tv show of oh who in our class is going to be the next great Polly think and i know the way it was advertised it's like makes you rethink your ideas of like a hero and the people you worship um i know i i mean to be fair it um i'm was not the target audience it is a book meant for younger children so so just bear that in mind i don't want to talk bad about the book because you know it's still a solid uh like middle grade contemporary book and you know i think someone at that age would still really enjoy it but you know just the overall message was fairly shallow like it could have gone deeper but like I said it's for kids I'm not the target audience so absolutely no hate to that book um you may know a kid who would like it so yeah no need lingering on this question on to the next one okay next question like what's your biggest surprise and I I interpret this as a book you were surprised you love so much and for me that's A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross it you know it was a fantasy book that I got in my book of the month subscription and I was like oh it'll pro- I'll probably enjoy this I did not expect to like love it because it was it was really good like it kind of had a slow a slow beginning but like and eventually as I kept reading I got to know the characters I got really into it and I was crying by the end and because I thought and I also thought like it was a standalone so the way it ended at what happened at the end of the book I was like it it was like the conclusion of that story but I'm like no I need more and then thank goodness because I checked Goodreads there is another one planned so I need that sequel too just like I need Chain of Thorns maybe not quite to the same level but still I need the next book um basically it's there's like this uh, there's like this island and our main character is a is a bard he can play music and make magical things happen and then summon spirits and he was like in the mainland going to school then he has to come home because there's a crisis going on and he kind of has a rivals to lovers relationship with one of the other major characters and that's all I'm gonna say uh just go read it A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross it's really really good okay next is a favorite new author and um so and I'm going with uh E.K. Johnson because um, I find I finished watching Clone Wars for the first time, and after I fin and after I finished season seven, I was like, no, I don't want this to be over. So what did I do? I went to the bookstore and I bought the Ahsoka novel that E.K. Johnson wrote, and it was it was really good because Ahsoka like was my favorite character that came out of that TV show. She really grew on me. I'm kind of jealous that I didn't watch the show sooner. I didn't get to grow up with Ahsoka like so many people but I but I really enjoyed it and E.K. Johnson also wrote the Queen Shadow series which is all about Padme who was my favorite 
a Star Wars character growing up, you know, during the prequel era as a kid. Naturally, I dressed up as Padme for Halloween a couple times. So I'm surprised I haven't read those ones. So I should get on. So I'll probably read those very soon, especially, you know, after reading the Ahsoka novel and really liking it. I now get a whole series about Padme that E.K. Johnson wrote. So I'm excited about that. Yay. So uh, next question. So next is a uh, newest fictional crush, but I kind of struggle with this one because I don't really have a ton of like fictional crushes, uh, especially in books like um, like my go to answer is always Jem Carstairs. Like that's like the one for sure who's like always been a fictional crush for like the past six years. Eight fudge. When did I? Yeah, like eight years. Fudge. <laughs> anyway, um. So yeah, J- Jem Carstairs is usually always my my answer. I don't have really have any others, and not really any new ones this year. So, but I just said Obi Wan Kenobi because <laughs> I'm obsessed with the new Obi Wan series. Like I said last episode. Uh, so yeah, that's my answer. Moving on. Okay, next um newest favorite character. I'm sticking with the Star Wars theme, Ahsoka Tano. Like I said, she was the best part of Clone Wars for me. Well, her and I loved I loved Rex and all the clones too. And of course, I love seeing Pad. Maybe a badass senator, of course. And Obi Wan and Anakin are great. But yeah, Ahsoka is my new favorite character, and I'm counting this in a book tag because, like I said, I read the Ahsoka novel, and that's all I'm gonna say on it. Can't wait for the series, the Ahsoka series that will eventually come out. Uh, who's the actress rosario who played her in that in season two of mandalorian uh she was really good that's how i was introduced to ahsoka by watching the mandalorian then after that i was like oh maybe i should finally watch clone wars and i did it it was the best decision ever so that's my answer okay next is what's a book that made you cry and i went with the stationery shop by merhan uh, kamali um it's a beautiful love story that just spans throughout years and it was freak and it was a freaking phenomenal book i loved i loved it has a pr- has a pretty cover um one of the most important locations is obviously a stationery shop which has books in it and i always love books where the setting is a bookstore or a library or someplace like that and i was very emotional several times like gasped out loud and highly recommend it and the opposite of sadness is what is a book that made me happy? So I kind of struggled with this because most books I've, I've read so far made me emotional and not always in the happy way. But um, no, I, went with, I decided to go with Mooncakes by Suzanne Walker. It's a graphic novel about witches and it's a good old fun time. It's all, it's all you need to know. A fun, a fun graphic novel about witches. On to the next question. And speaking of things that make me happy, uh, next question is uh, uh, best uh, book to film adaptation. And I haven't really seen any like movies. Like the only movies I've gone to theaters for this year are essentially Marvel movies. So I was like, what have I seen? And then, but then I was like, wait, I can include TV adaptation. So of course I had to go with Heartstopper, the best show ever. <laughs> um based on the graphic novel series of course by alice oseman who if you haven't who if you've been here for a little while or listened to some other episodes you know that i love alice oseman's book so much heartstopper is one of my favorite series ever radio silence is my favorite book and i'm so happy alice got a freaking amazing adaptation of her works um the cast is perfect the tone of the show is perfect it just Everything about the show is perfect, and we're confirmed for two more seasons. I'm so friggin' happy. Ah. So yes, um, if you haven't read the graphic novels or you haven't watched the show, it's on Netflix. Go watch Heartstopper right now. Um, it'll make you smile and feel all kinds of positive emotions. It's fantastic. Okay, so next is, um, well, the question says favorite video you've made this year because this tag originated on YouTube, but obviously this is not a video, so I'll just say, you know, podcast episode that I've recorded, and honestly, any episode where I've had a guest on, which are, have always been my, which all have been my friends, because 
it's just so nice. I get to have like a really wonderful conversation with them and you know, it's recorded on the internet for all time and I have so much fun editing those. Like I'm not kidding. I li- I'm literally smiling when I am like li- when I'm li- when I'm editing those episodes cuz it's like it's listening to this conversation I had with my with my friend, you know, someone I genuinely love and care about and it's fantastic. Like um Sarah, Lily, Gabby, I love you guys. <laughs> You go, and all of you need to come back for more episodes because uh, because I love talking to you guys. Yeah, I can't even pick one because obviously I did the makeup tag with Lily. That was a, that was a lot of fun. It was my first time having a guest on, so Lily was the guinea pig in that. Um, Sarah and I did a couple tags. Uh, Gabby and I have now done a couple tags, and she and I, of course, did that very long um, wrap up episode for a ballad that was great uh, and that took so long to edit but it was so worth it and I was genuinely like happy the whole time listening to it because because I love my friends so yeah enough of me getting mushy time to move on to the next question okay next is most beautiful book you've acquired I mean I've acquired a lot of really pretty books but um I'm gonna go with uh like the uh copies of Jane Austen's books that I've collected that I got from Barnes and Noble. Um, Allison, you need to eventually post those on Instagram so people can see how pretty they are. But yeah, and I got them at a really good price too. Like they were less than ten dollars each, and that's really good for especially like pretty editions of of classics. So yeah, my Jane Austen collection. Those are some of the prettiest books I have acquired this year. And we got one more question. All right, and the last and final question is, what book do you need to read by the end of the year? You, besides all of them, that is the real answer, but I know that is impossible. So um, I do want to finish reading all the books that I, ha- that I have through Book of the Month. I don't know, it just seems like something I can accomplish because that TBR pile isn't too overwhelming yet, though at this rate, if I keep putting it off, it will be. But we're not going to focus on that. But like... Other than my all my book of the month books, um, I really want to read All My Rage by Saba Tahir. It's ridiculous I haven't read it yet because I love I love her Ember in the Ashes series. So it's weird that I haven't read her new book. Um, the Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a book I've been putting off for the past like eight years. And I told myself I would read it last month. And then I didn't because then <laughs> I randomly got in the mood to read um, These Violent Delights, which, you know, wasn't a bad decision. And I also really want to read this book called uh, Great or Nothing, which is like written by a few different authors. I forgot to write their names down. Um, but it's a retelling of Little Women, like set in like World War II. And I love the 2019 Little Women movie. I adore the book. So I want to read this like retelling of it. It sounds really good. So yeah. Uh, with that being said, uh, that's the last question. We've come to the end of the tag. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening i really appreciate it um like i said at the beginning of the episode rachel zegler's lucy gray and i'm so excited i'll be thinking about that for the rest of the day but yeah i hope you guys have a great day slash night whenever you're listening and i will talk to you guys next time bye